Welcome to Becoming a Better Wedding Filmmaker, the workshop that dives deeper into the purpose behind finding yourself as an artist, building a sustainable wedding business, and understanding the true meaning of being a wedding filmmaker. Inside this free workshop, you're gonna gain insight into my decade-long experience navigating the wedding industry, how passion leads to profit, discovering the right mindset that leads to longevity and true joy, finding identity in a copy-paste culture, and discovering the heart behind being a wedding filmmaker. I am so excited you are here. Thank you for taking the time to check out this workshop I hope to put together many more of these free resources for you guys, so I hope you gain a lot of valuable insight, relatable wisdom, and practical knowledge that you can take with you into the next wedding season. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Before I dive deep into this workshop, I think it's important to share a little bit about my story and my journey into the wedding filmmaking world and where I started and all the things that I have gone through to get me to a place of contentment in my business. So traveling back to the year 2008, this is where I got my first job as a busboy at Outback Steakhouse. I was also a junior in high school at the time. As a junior, as a 15, 16 year old, you don't have any idea what you wanna do with your life. So I was just in that discovery period. And it's really through that discovery where I discovered that I really had an interest in filmmaking. I had an interest in creating things. Me and my friends would get together on the weekends and we would make these silly, stupid, jackass style videos feeling like we were the next adam sandler and company just making funny things editing them together and sharing them with the world to see and it was really just through that experience where i just discovered that i actually really have an interest a passion for creating things that make people feel so this was 2008 to 2010, and then in 2010, I was 18, and Outback promoted me to the glorious title of waiter. <laughs> and so it was really through these years where I started learning more about hospitality and serving and what it means to provide a really good experience for people. And I think these early skill sets is really what helped me develop such a sustainable and reputable business later on. So through the next few years of waiting tables, attending community college, figuring out life as I knew it, one of my friends at the restaurant was getting engaged and he asked me if I wanted to film and photograph his wedding. So of course, naturally I said yes. And what's crazier is yes, you heard that right, film and photographed his wedding. First wedding ever, I provided two creative services. Never photographed a thing in my life. Really, film was what I was learning and I was trying to get better at. And so I was just like, you know, sure, I'll do it for free because I don't really know much about photography. So we'll figure that out as it comes along. So this is me at one of my first weddings ever. I believe this camera is a Canon 60D or T3i with a Rode NTG2. XLR cable wrapped around my body, going right into a Zoom H4n. And here on screen, you can see my first wedding film ever. It's so surreal looking at this first wedding and seeing how far I've come as a filmmaker, as an artist, and how I never would have imagined that I would discover a path so fulfilling and rewarding. I remember going home and editing this thing in one day. I dumped everything on my computer, opened up Final Cut, and I just got lost. I got so lost and immersed into the creation process. I stayed up till like 3 a.m. making this thing. I sent it to them that same day and went to bed. And when I woke up, they had already posted it. They had tagged me and crazy thing happened after 24 hours of sending them this film. I received my first wedding inquiry my first potential paying customer. It was a friend from elementary school who I hadn't talked to in years and she reached out and she's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you do weddings. How much do you charge? 
And that one question just sent me questioning everything that I thought I knew. I was like, wait, you can actually make money doing this? That's pretty awesome. I can actually stop waiting tables. I can make a living doing something creative, giving people something, making fulfilling work, doing all the things that really inspire me. I was locked in. And through our conversation, I was able to lock this wedding in for a whopping $200, which at the time was, I was, I was rich. I could hang everything up. I could call it a day for the waiting tables because generally waiting tables, I'd only make $50 to $100 if I was lucky a night. So being able to make $200 doing something creative and more fulfilling just excited me so much. So fast forwarding a couple years, I was just filming weddings, having the time of my life. I saved up money from the restaurant just to continue to invest in new gear, update my equipment, and I just went out with a curious heart to learn more about the filmmaking process. And when I started, you know, it really wasn't about the money. Clearly $200, $300, I think the most I charged back then was 800 and I thought that was just like max. I was capped, I couldn't go any further. But really, I just fell in love with creating. I fell in love with serving, the connection, the rewarding feeling that you get when you give someone this gift of memory. You know, I think back to making those funny skit videos with my friends and the feeling I got creating these things, just that feeling of contentment. You know, it was a similar feeling, but with weddings, it was so much bigger and it felt way more important. And little did I know it, but this was me discovering my why I film weddings. But while I was passionate, after a few years, a shift started to happen where I started to question things and wondered if I could really do this as a career. Can it be sustainable? Can I book more than $500 a wedding or even book more than five weddings a season? And the answer is yes. However, back then I just had no sense of direction. I had no really solid business acumen, sense of identity into the kind of wedding filmmaker that I wanted to be. I knew my purpose, I knew my why, but I didn't know the how. How I could turn this crazy busboy's passion of filming weddings into a full-time career. So all of this to say, my story is a demonstration that really the first step to becoming a better wedding filmmaker starts with you feeling connected to a deep sense of knowing your purpose, knowing your why, or in layman's terms, having clarity. Now let's dive into how you can turn this passion into profit. Now, while it was clear that I had the passion for filming weddings, I still had to figure out how to make a living doing this full time because $200 here, $500 a wedding just wasn't going to cut it, which led me to figuring out the burning question, how do you turn passion into profit? And one thing that I have learned navigating the wedding industry is couples are drawn not only to the quality of your work, but to the emotional authenticity that stems from a filmmaker's genuine love for the craft. Remarkably, the irony lies in the fact that by prioritizing passion ultimately leads to profitability. And the biggest reason I've had longevity in this industry is because that I'm passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about creating films that leave a lasting impact for every couple I work with. And the big thing is they can feel that passion, not just in the films, but in the way that I speak, in the words that I use on my website and in the films that I make. Through your language, your tone of voice, personality and the genuine care that you should put into every conversation. This is how you show your couple that you truly value them, that you truly value their story because you never want to treat couples like they are just another number. And what this is doing is this helps you build trust in your brand and in the relationship with your couples, their families right from the start by demonstrating that genuine attentiveness to their goals and over-promising and over-delivering every single time. If you do this, you will have success because one, couples are gonna talk. They're gonna share their film. They're gonna praise your attention to detail, your thoughtfulness, your ability to weave their story and capture the essence of who they are. 
And this is not only gonna lead you to filling up your calendar year after year, but this is really how you build one of the most powerful marketing tools in your business, and that's word of mouth marketing. But let's dive deeper into how passion can lead to profit through the passion over profit timeline. So if you start with passion, this is gonna lead to long-term fulfillment. It's gonna help you build genuine relationships, making better films because of those relationships, booking your dream couple, your ideal couple, and that's gonna lead you to more profit, making more money. And inversely, if you start with a profit first mindset, this is gonna lead to short-term fulfillment because you're gonna create transactional relationships versus genuine ones, which is gonna lead you to creating films that leave you less than inspired, creating those cookie cutter mold films, leading you to being undervalued because of the films that you're making, which is gonna lead you to burnout and causing you to want to leave the industry altogether. Because if you treat couples like another number, you create a transactional relationship. And this will only fulfill you for so long because you aren't really building relationships. You are only showing couples that you really only care about one thing. Only thinking about profit leads to short-term fulfillment and is the fast track to burnout. I know because I've been there. While a profit-first mindset may offer that immediate financial gratification, it often falls short in sustaining long-term success in the wedding industry because you're valuing dollars and cents versus connection and experience. And when we think of profit, I don't wanna to get too caught up in the weeds of just thinking that it only means finances or money. Really profit shouldn't always come from that. It should be from cultivating genuine relationships and making films that truly leave a lasting impact in other people's lives. That's the real profit. But the biggest contributing factor to turning your passion into profit is to remain consistent within every facet of your business. You want to be persistent and constantly show up. That's one of the downsides of being an entrepreneur is it really does rely solely on you. There's no one else that you can place the blame if things don't go the way that you want them to. Everything really is riding on you and making sure that you're showing up that you're just keeping that passion alive and that you are just remaining faithful to your purpose. You want to overpromise and over deliver. And I did this every single time with every couple. I was always going above and beyond. How can I make this experience better than what they expect, better than what they think they're getting from me? All of these things is really a way for you to create a beautiful experience for your couple that leaves them raving about you and your work. And that goes in line with also over communicating. From the inquiry to the delivery, you wanna make sure that you are just over communicating your goals, your couple's vision, the expectation, making sure that they just know what is coming next. Don't leave them in the dark. Don't make them feel uncertain about your ability. Don't leave it open to that trust slipping away from them. You wanna make sure that you're over communicating so that they trust you fully. They have no doubt in their minds that you are the guy or girl who is gonna turn this wedding into their dream video. So make sure that you are over communicating with everything that you do. Couples really do value honesty and genuine qualities in their vendors, and they wanna make sure that they can trust you. They want to have someone that is really truthful and transparent and honest. And as humans, we have that innate sense to have that gut feeling of if something feels right, if something feels off. So just making sure that you're being transparent at every single turn. You're not trying to sway the couple just to make the sale. You really want to have couples that value you, that you feel excited to work with so that you can create fulfilling work and profit long-term. Which is why being passionate about what you do and knowing your deep sense of purpose is essential to becoming a better wedding filmmaker. Now let's focus on the next area of becoming a better wedding filmmaker, and that is finding the right mindset. So I wanna tell you guys a story, and I feel like this workshop, mini course, documentary, whatever you wanna call it, has been one big story into my journey to becoming a better wedding filmmaker. And so far, I just hope this has resonated with you and given you some wisdom and 
applications that might be able to help you in your business this year. So before I get too far in the weeds and on some tangent or turn this into a soapbox, there are really two questions that I want you to answer by the end of this section. One is, why are you filming weddings? And the second one is, what is your mission for your business? Really take the time to answer these questions because they can reveal the truth about where your mindset is currently. And if I had taken the time to figure this out earlier, it would have saved me a ton of time and a lot of painful frustrations early on. So the year is 2017, 2018. I was a full-time wedding filmmaker. I went all in. I quit my day job the year prior. I had booked some mentorship calls to help me get structure. I locked in a year on the wedding pro advertisement sites, the wedding pages as you call them. And in 2017, I booked over 42 weddings. And some of you might look at that and say, wow, that's really good. You were really successful. But I look at that year and all I see is dysfunction. I was now four years past the young filmmaker who had filmed and photographed his first wedding. I was now running a business and had a huge responsibility in front of me. And while on the outside, it might've looked like things were going smoothly, I was honestly an absolute wreck on the inside. Maybe it was because I was growing too fast, I was putting too much on my plate, desperate to remain unchained by conformity. I was working every other weekend, oftentimes multiple events in one weekend. My turnaround time was five to six weeks. That is no joke. And with 42 weddings, that is a lot. I was editing my life away. I had zero social life crippling anxiety, and worst of all, I was severely depressed. But how could this be though? How could I go from the guy that was so fired up, editing until 3 a.m. from the same night of his first wedding, to the guy that was starting to resent weddings altogether and wanting to walk away from the industry? The short answer is I had the wrong mindset. I was misguided by selfish ambition, corrupted by profit, and became hell-bent on gaining popularity as an industry leader. I was exhausted, I was drained, and some may think, yes, 42 weddings is enough to make anybody exhausted. The unrealistic delivery times, being a workaholic, and all those things, while there is definitely a lot of truth to that, the main reason was because I really had developed the wrong mindset about what I was doing. I was focused solely on profit, selfish desire, praise and attention, and I was filming weddings to serve myself. You see, somewhere along the road of creating for other people, I landed on the path of glory of self. I no longer cared about creating films that my couples loved. I wanted to impress other filmmakers, industry leaders. I wanted to impress my mentors with my work. I wanted my work to be noticed way more than I wanted to make my couples happy which was 100% the wrong mindset. And I didn't realize it at the time, but this was making me miserable. And that's when I sought guidance from my first teacher, my first mentor, good old mom. And what she told me completely shifted my entire thought process, how I even viewed wedding filmmaking, how I even viewed my life. I remember telling her how unhappy I was and that I wanted to quit. I was so unfulfilled. I was actually at a wedding when I told her this. I had stepped outside to, to make a phone call because I was just having so much anxiety. And so I called her at this wedding and she just said one word to me, joy. Now, what I didn't realize is that she was actually giving me the formula to life with just this one word and the values that encompasses my brand and my life every single day. Joy is an acronym for Jesus, others, and yourself. And even if you aren't a Christian, I truly believe that this one word, these principles can massively impact and transform your life and your business. Because the act of putting others before yourself is the recipe to becoming a better filmmaker. And going back to the conversation with my mom, she told me that I was unhappy and unfulfilled because I was so hyper-focused on serving myself rather than truly serving others. And I'll be honest, this was a hard pill to swallow, but she was right. Everything that I was building was for the wrong reasons. I'd become a steward of self rather than a servant to others. 
Think about how you feel or have felt when you finished a wedding film and you send it off to the client. They come back with a glowing five out of five star review of how much they adored you, how much they adored what you created, how it made them feel, and that they're gonna treasure this gift forever. It feels amazing to hear those words and that tells us, that alone tells us that the work that we're doing is making a positive impact for someone else. And by serving other people, this is gonna lead to true joy and fulfillment. And honestly, I had forgotten this. I had forgotten what it felt like after my first wedding, that, that sense of purpose, that sense of fulfillment, and that sense of joy. I was so wrapped up in myself. I was so confused and corrupted by all of these other things that didn't have any weight or true meaning in my life. And I knew that I needed a way out of this mindset if I wanted to succeed in my business, if I wanted to stay away from a nine to five. So the way out of this mindset was to come to the end of myself, to understand that wedding filmmaking should not be a selfish pursuit, but to serve others reverently and passionately for their benefit. Because the irony is by focusing on other people, your mind is free from corruption. It's free from the noise, the discontent and you get to create more genuine and honest films. You let your couple be the hero of the story versus yourself, and through practice, repetition, and consistency, and through serving with that reverence, as a byproduct, your work will get better and it will get noticed. And honestly, the funny thing is when it does get noticed, it honestly won't even phase you because you realize that the true purpose to create wedding films is in service of family and the people in them. It's not for everyone else. Because here's the truth. You know, wedding filmmaking is not about you. And I had the biggest ego when I first started because of all the money that was coming in the door, all the weddings I was booking. I just thought that I was just this hot shot and it really developed an incredibly disappointing mindset in my life and the person that I was becoming. I didn't want that. I knew that that wasn't at the heart of who I was and the kind of filmmaker that I wanted to be. And when I faced and accepted that simple and painful fact and put others before myself, that's when everything started to change for me and my business. My films got better, I was booking more fulfilling weddings, Couples started to value me more in my work. I was able to charge more for my work because of that. I was happier, I was so much happier. And the biggest change was I found identity as a filmmaker. But the simple fact of this story is I got lost and I needed to be found. And I'll be honest, I'm sure it will continue to happen throughout my life because I'm not perfect, I don't have all the answers, I don't have it all figured out. In fact, I'm always figuring things out as I go. But when it comes to becoming a better wedding filmmaker, developing the right mindset is pivotal if you want to create films that inspire, fulfill, and impress the people that matter most. Keep the JOY acronym at the forefront of your life and in everything you do, being the best servant to others. And this is one of the only reasons that I can look back and see why I've had longevity in this industry for the last decade of filming weddings. It's really the only thing that makes sense of why I'm still doing this. But now that we've talked about developing the right mindsets, let's dive into how my brand found identity. When it comes to finding your identity within your brand, this is so crucial to becoming a better wedding filmmaker. Here's a little fun fact about myself is I didn't really figure this out until I was six years into filming weddings. This part will take some time and that's okay. But let's answer the question. How do you find your identity in a saturated industry? The good news is that you don't really have to find your identity as an artist because you really already have that superpower inside you because your identity surrounds how you impact others through your perspective, your character, values, language, and identity is just another way of imparting feeling. You already possess this skill. It just needs to be unearthed shaped and developed. One of my favorite books, Steal Like an Artist, which if you haven't read, I will link it down in the resources section of this workshop, but it does an incredible job of simplifying the creative process and removes the immense weight and pressure of desperately seeking originality and instead embracing influence. 
Austin Kleon writes, a good artist understands that nothing comes from nowhere. All creative work builds on what came before. And this is even a Bible verse. In Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. And this sentiment may be depressing because honestly, when I first heard it, it was for me. Until I realized that the path to true originality is by embracing influence and letting go of ego. Because if I look back, really chasing originality was getting in the way of my happiness and my success. And it was gonna keep me from long-term fulfillment in this industry if things didn't change. Now that's not to say that your work can't have original tones or you can't have that authenticity and uniqueness in your work, because you definitely can. Austin Kleon writes again, you know, nothing is original, so embrace influence. So let's put this in the perspective of a wedding filmmaker. If we educate ourselves on how other filmmakers who came before us, how they film, edit, color grade, communicate, and we study their work, reverse engineer the process over and over again, this is how you're gonna build up the skills to unearth that style that is all your own. So more practically, how can we unearth this superpower? So a little pun that I've created is called plant an artist tree. So to find your artistry, you have to plant an artist tree. So what do I mean by this? You know, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find people that inspire you people of influence in your life, whether that's artists, musicians, painters, directors, people that have influenced your life as you know it. Study everything that there is to know about this particular artist. Find out their inspirations and their work and then study everything there is to know about those people. And soon you'll have your own artist tree that is full of inspirations and ideas for your work. The beautiful truth is you don't have to know who you are as a filmmaker or storyteller before you get started. That all comes through the process of making things. And the last line that I'll steal from this book, because it's just too good, you guys, is when the author talks about imposter syndrome, which is something that I constantly struggle with as a creative, and I think most of us do. He says, if you feel like a phony, like you're just winging it, that you really don't have any idea what you're doing, guess what? None of us do. Ask anybody doing truly creative work and they will tell you the truth. They don't know where the good stuff comes from. They just show up and do their thing every day. In essence, fake it till you make it. Don't try to figure it all out right now. Immerse yourselves into wedding films, study, reverse engineer their process, and just create. Because the act of doing is where you're gonna find your identity and uniqueness and a style that is all your own. Now that we've dived into a more philosophical approach on becoming a better wedding filmmaker, I want to dive deeper into some practical methods that can really help you build your skills as a filmmaker. And if I could boil down how to become a better wedding filmmaker into just three things, it would be reverse engineer, adapt, and practice. So let's start with the first one, reverse engineering. This is the art of deconstructing a work of art or product to learn and extract information. Reverse engineer other filmmakers' work and artists that have inspired you to really help you learn the process of storytelling and creating intentional wedding films. The next is adapting, which is becoming adjusted to evolving conditions. Learn how to adapt to your situation and circumstances because wedding filmmaking is unpredictable. And in order to capture the day beautifully in every single frame, is by learning the art of adapting to the unexpected. It's not really something that can be explained and taught verbally. This is really best learned through repetition, learning the patterns of a traditional wedding day, making those quick decisions, learning from making the wrong decisions, not overthinking, accepting what you cannot change, and just moving on. Because the truth is, you're gonna have situations that frustrate you beyond measure. I can promise you that. You're gonna have situations where people treat you poorly, conditions that are just uninspiring. But learning to adapt, not just technically, but emotionally, is gonna yield greater results long-term and help you become a more resilient filmmaker, which is pivotal if you want to build a reputable business. And the last is to practice. 
which is repeating an act to become proficient. At the end of the day, you can watch these workshops, you can invest in courses, you can listen, immerse, digest information through the screen, but nothing is gonna get you to the place you wanna be faster than practicing. So ways that you can do that if you're just starting out is by second shooting. Be a yes man to any wedding that comes your way right now, especially if you're just getting started. Offer your services for free, cold call other creatives, slide into DMs offering to shadow others. Be proactive and stay hungry so that you can sharpen your skills to help grow your business. And the last thing I want to end with is let's define what it means to be a wedding filmmaker. Now that we've talked about all the things, hopefully this is gonna be a full circle moment because defining what it means to be a wedding filmmaker starts with finding your purpose, your deep sense of knowing, discovering your passion, what excites you most about being a wedding filmmaker, which leads to developing the right mindset, to shaping and unearthing your identity, to finally understanding the meaning of it all. And if I had to put it in one word, if I had to summarize a wedding filmmaker into just one word, that one word would be servant. Because wedding filmmaking is more than just capturing a moment in time. It's more than creating a beautiful story, getting praise, recognition. It is and always will be about serving people and serving them well. Service over selfishness, passion over profit. This is what ultimately makes you a better wedding filmmaker. It's becoming the best servant you can be for someone else. Adopting this principle is crucial if you want to create inspiring films, build a sustainable business, and book your ideal client over and over again. Remember, you aren't just serving the couple, but everyone involved. DJs, planners, venue owners, florists, painters, all of the key players that are responsible for the overall success of a wedding day. You want to adopt the spirit of hospitality and truly serve everyone involved by going above and beyond, doing things without ask or even expectation. Things like sending the venue drone footage or beautiful shots of their property that you captured, sending the photographer some behind the scenes footage, sending the DJ all the dancing footage so that they can create reels and hype up their services sending details to the planner. We have such a beautiful opportunity as filmmakers to help everyone involved, to help other people, not just the couple, but other businesses as well, because we can capture things that they simply can't or that they have to hire out for. And by just being that servant, adopting that spirit of hospitality, going above and beyond without ask and expectation, this builds trust and reliability and keeps you top of mind on a consistent basis. This is how you cultivate those genuine relationships, not just with your couple, but with other people as well. And honestly, it's through this servanthood mindset that I was able to build brand awareness, to book consistent weddings every single month, to be the go-to wedding filmmaker in my area for the last eight years. By remaining consistent, constantly showing up, and being a good servant to others. But now that I've talked about what I believe wedding filmmaking is, let's talk about what I know wedding filmmaking is not. Wedding filmmaking is not about glory. It's not about financial gain. It's not about selfish ambition. Now, this isn't to say that we can't have professional goals and take care of our own creative desires. We absolutely should. But by adopting a servant first mentality, remembering the JOY acronym, this is what's gonna provide that true joy, fulfillment, and longevity as a wedding filmmaker, which is ultimately what I want for you all, especially if you're just starting out, because I remember how painfully frustrating it was for me when I got started, not having that words of wisdom or that genuine, sincere sounding board, someone who could speak life into my business, give me all the tools and resources I need to truly succeed and avoid going through all those painful moments and mistakes and just lack of identity and purpose when I really got going into this industry. And I just want you guys, if you're just getting started and I want you to make it through that five-year mark, I want to change the narrative when it comes to wedding filmmakers quitting after 
two, three, even five years. I want you guys to have long-term success in this industry. So some questions that I want you guys to ask yourself and reflect on this year. What does wedding filmmaking mean to you? What kind of filmmaker do you want to be? Why do you even want to film weddings? How do you want your films to make couples feel? Who inspires you in life? But to wrap things up, the more we focus on the right things, the right mindset, learning more about ourselves as artists, as individuals, keeping passion alive, and understanding the heart behind the immense responsibility and true meaning behind being a wedding filmmaker, we won't just be better, but we'll be so much more fulfilled in our career and daily lives. But thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the end, be sure to comment below. Let me know what you thought of this workshop, what you hope to see in future workshops or educational content in general. Remember, there are some freebies down below, so make sure you snag those. And either way, I'd love to hear from you guys. So send me a message and until next time, keep creating and telling beautiful stories.